Hello there and welcome to this episode of the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. I'm Alan Waddell and joined as always by the Athletic Director here at Southeastern Louisiana University, Jay Ortiz. And Jay, thanks for stopping by and spending some time with us. And recently, it was homecoming 2014 uh, at Southeastern, a fantastic day for football, a fantastic day for the university as a whole uh, on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday was outstanding. I mean, the atmosphere around campus was electric. You go around Friendship Circle, it was jam-packed, like a Mardi Gras type atmosphere. The homecoming parade went around Friendship Circle, went downtown, and I tell you, Kathy Pittman and her alumni did such a great job with setting everything up. We also want to thank the fans. Uh, Southeastern uh, Strawberry Stadium had the largest crowd since 2005, I think over 2,000 students, so we want to thank the student body and also our fans for coming out. Student body's been outstanding. I'll tell you what, just watching the student section be packed like it was, seeing them interact, getting into it, seeing them tailgate. Heck, Friday night before the game, it was like a concert going on in the Friendship Circle, and that's what you want. That type of atmosphere. It was outstanding uh, Saturday for homecoming and pretty good product on the field as well as the Lions knocked off Central Arkansas, moved to 4-0 in conference play and currently sit uh, alone at the top at 4-0 in conference play. So congratulations to Coach Roberts as they continue to push forward to another Southland Conference Championship. Also coach during homecoming week every year uh, they always name an alumnus of the year. And this year, fortunate enough, an alumnus of the year was also an athletic alumni, and I know that you're very proud of that. Yeah, Craig Huss, you know, one of our former standouts in basketball, alumni of the year, and I tell you what, what a great honor. Was able to go to the banquet on Friday night. He was there with his family, and what a great recognition. Coach, I know also if you if you look around campus right now, baseball teams is starting to heat up a little bit as they're playing in fall baseball, getting ready uh, for their season coming up in the spring. I know you're excited what Matt's doing with that program and, and how you've seen it. Uh, the players that he's brought in uh, and trying to build off that regional birth a year ago. I tell you what, they did a great job of bringing in some new players. We lost some key guys and Andre Jatour, Andrew Guybolt, just to name two of them. But they did a good job of bringing some new players to mesh with the returners we have because we have a good nucleus coming back, especially on a man like with guys like Tate Cino, and Mason Clotz, and Kyle Setatal. So those net from million names are still here and coaching staff's done a great job of getting those guys together. I know your department's also going to get very busy here in the next few weeks as sports are going to start overlapping as basketball is going to get going. We're going to talk with coach Yolanda Moore later on in the program. I also had a chance to, to, to speak with Jay Ladner this past week. Both of these coaches are new to Southeastern. They have new energy. Looking forward to a great basketball year. Yeah, I tell you, they've done a great job of just getting their student athletes, you know, intertwined with all the other student athletes. That's the thing about Southeastern. All our athletes are together. And years past, that wasn't the case with our men's and women's basketball program. But if you could see tailgating, that basketball had a tailgating set up right next to the baseball. Also, let's let's give some love as we stay right there in the university center as volleyball. This is a program that we've seen continue to improve this year. And recently, Morgan Todd was named Southland Conference Defensive Player of the Week. That program's starting to get some recognition. Yeah, Coach Jim Smoot's done such a great job of turning that program around, contending for the conference uh, tournament this year. They'll be in that tournament, make some ways. But Morgan's such a great student athlete. Sees what you want when you go recruiting. Somebody's going to graduate, somebody making tremendous grades, tremendous GPA, and excels on the court as well. So as you can see, a lot going on here this week on the Southeastern Sports Report. Let's take a break. We'll get to all the action when we come back right here on the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. <gasps> Hello, beautiful. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi, Anthony. How much did my discount double check save me? About 150. Done. I don't have State Farm, but insurance, find me money. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. There to help you with unexpected savings. That's getting to a better state. Let's hear it for Bud Light. The perfect beer for when you take over a town, make me the mayor, call it whatever USA. Then pack it to the brim with so much spontaneous, never thought I'd be doing this awesomeness that it's hard to believe we actually pulled it off. Right? Body bowling, roller disco, Bud Light, tiny cars, tiny horses, big celebrities, Bud Light, dancing, karaoke, Bud Light, whatever that is. This guy, this girl, oh my, wow, look at that. Bud Light and Bud Light, then put it on the internet for everyone to see. And whatever else happens. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Find out more at upforwhatever.com.
Welcome back to the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. I want to thank Athletic Director Jay Ortiz for stopping by and catching us up on all that we need to know about Southeastern Athletics. We're going to start this week with a feature on one of our Lady Lion Volleyball players, Morgan Todd, who was recently named Southland Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Southeastern Louisiana Junior Libero Morgan Todd was named the Southland Conference Women's Volleyball Defensive Player of the Week this past week. She averaged just over seven digs per set helping the Lady Lions to their best Southland Conference start in more than a decade with a 4-2 and two conference record. The Mandeville, Louisiana native, she went to Fountain Blue High School, recorded 23 digs and a 3-1 to one win over McNeese State Tuesday. And then 27 digs in just three sets as Southeastern swept past the University of New Orleans. I mean, I never thought I would get that honor, but I'm really glad that I did. I mean, all my hard work is showing, and I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of myself. Yeah, she's been outstanding for us. Um, I think it actually started in the spring with her and Brooke Balzer. I told them after we would finish that uh, unit of training that, looking back, I really never had to worry about them because they always did their job. They were playing great defense, passing the ball well, and they both continue to do that and Morgan's just been outstanding defensively. Todd helped to hold opponents to a 103 hitting percentage over the week. She also dished out four assists and three service aces. She's currently third in the conference with an average of 5.17 digs per set, a number that placed her 20th nationally. I'm working to get first. I want to get first and last year I was seventh and I need to get better, so I keep working and third now, and I want to keep that and I want to go higher. She gives us a lot of opportunities uh, to score when we serve. She's digging the other team and putting the ball up where we can get a chance to score. Not always, unfortunately, but she definitely provides that opportunity. Todd, a kinesiology major from Mandeville. While on-court success is very important to Todd, she's most thankful for the relationship she's made with her teammates over the past three seasons. We're like family, so they're like my sisters. We fight and then two hours later we're like best friends again. And that's how I love, I love this team, I love everyone. And we work, we all have one goal. We all come to practice and we work our butts off and I'm really proud of everyone. The Lady Lions volleyball team currently sits in the middle of the Southland race with eight matches to go. Southeastern will be at home for three of those matches, on the road for five, as they try to secure themselves a spot in the Southland Conference Tournament coming up November 21st through the 23rd in Natchitoches, Louisiana. We are a really good team. We just need to show that in the games, and I feel like we show that at home with all of our fans and everything. But, I mean, from now we're just getting better at practice and everyone's working really hard. For more info on the Lady Lion volleyball team or to read more about junior Morgan Todd, you can visit lionsports.net. Click on the volleyball link. Congratulations to Morgan Todd as she was named Southland Commerce Defensive Player of the Week. Right now, Morgan having a fantastic year as she's in the top 20 nationally when it comes to digs. All right, now let's turn our attention to baseball as we're going to check in with Coach Matt Reiser's club as they are in the middle of fall practice. With fall practice in full swing, head coach Matt Reiser and the Southeastern Louisiana baseball squad played a trio of inter-squad games at Pat Keneally Diamond and Alumni Field this past weekend as they continue to prepare for the Fall World Series and the upcoming 2015 regular season. Yeah, you know, we, we know uh, it was a talented crew coming in. Uh, the biggest thing we're working on is the mental toughness side of it. And I tell you what, our, our veterans, the guys who have come back and been in this program for a couple of years and uh, had the experience of doing a fantastic job of leading those guys that, that are new. Uh, they're slowly but surely figuring it out. You know, it's always a process. Uh, you know, and obviously we, we won't find out the real test until February 13th, but uh, there's definitely progress going along. And if we can continue to progress the way we're going, uh, I think we'll be all right. The Lions took to the Diamond Friday at noon, opening up the three-game stand. Saturday's first pitch was at 10 a.m., well ahead of football's evening kickoff in Strawberry Stadium. Sunday, the Lions wrapped up the weekend action with a 5 p.m. first pitch, and while the offense put up some good numbers, the first two games, game three was an old-fashioned pitcher's duel. It's been back and forth. Uh, you know, some some days we hit. I think yesterday was nine to nine. The day before that was ten four, something like that. And so, and, you know, tonight it's two nothing. Uh, you know, some guys are, are, are getting better uh, and, and getting that experience in there. And you know, obviously there's some guys that are in new positions that are still trying to figure it out. So sometimes that'll play a little bit uh, on the score as well defensively. But uh, yeah, these two guys tonight really put together a, a nice performance and, and really progressed so far this fall. The Lions will continue to work from now until October 27th, when fall practice will conclude. The draft for the annual fall. World Series will take place then, but before we can get to that point, Coach Reiser says there's still plenty more he needs to see out of his squad. The biggest thing is I want to make sure we're, we're playing every single pitch. You know, you're getting that energy. You know, we've been doing a good job, maybe playing six or seven innings in a nine-inning squad, when you kind of lose focus for a little bit. 
Uh, and the neat thing about the World Series, it brings out this is kind of gets. Uh, I know they get tired of playing each other a little bit, and it's kind of they, they know the strengths, know the weaknesses, so to speak. So uh, when we get in the fall World Series, it kind of rejuvenates everything. You know, it's kind of the end of the fall. The guys get really excited, get very competitive because they know what's at stake, uh, and it'll be a good shot in the arm for us to finish it off. The Fall World Series is slated for five games this year. Game one is scheduled for October 29th, with game two on Halloween, which will include Halloween at the ballpark. Southeastern opens the 2015 season on February 13th at home against Louisiana Tech. For more information on the 2015 Lion baseball squad, you can visit lionsports.net. Click on the baseball link under men's sports. A lot of new faces and a lot of returners for the Southeastern baseball team who are coming off of a 2014 Southland Conference Baseball Tournament Championship and a regional berth. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. We come back, we'll have more for you right here on the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. Mr. Goldman loved his family a lot, didn't he, Dad? He sure did. That's why he had State Farm Life Insurance, like you. So his family never has to worry, right? Mr. Goldman didn't have life insurance. Why not? Well, he's just a goldfish. Ignore him. You've got questions. Your State Farm agent has answers. Backed by the life insurance company millions of moms and dads already trust, we put the life back in life insurance. Let's hear it for Bud Light, the perfect beer for when you take over a town, make me the mayor, call it whatever USA. Then pack it to the brim with so much spontaneous, never thought I'd be doing this awesomeness that it's hard to believe we actually pulled it off, right? <gasps> Body bowling, roller disco, Bud Light, tiny cars, tiny horses, big celebrities, Bud Light, dancing, karaoke, Bud Light, whatever that is. This guy, this girl, oh my, wow, look at that. Bud Light and Bud Light, then put it on the internet for everyone to see. And whatever else happens. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Find out more at upforwhatever.com. Hey, Lion fans, I'm Southeastern head basketball coach Jay Ladd. Join us as we usher in a new era of Lion basketball. For more information on season tickets, visit lionsports.net or call 549-LINE. Always remember, line up. Welcome back to the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. Recently during homecoming week, Southeastern named their Alumnus of the Year. And this year, the Alumnus of the Year was also an athletic alumni, Craig Huss. Craig Huss, class of 1974 and 1976, and a retired senior executive who worked for 37 years with Archer Daniels Midland, one of the nation's largest agricultural firms, was honored as the 2014 Alumnus of the Year by the Southeastern Louisiana University Alumni Association. Huss was an excellent student, earning two degrees from Southeastern, but sometimes schoolwork wasn't his top priority. I was a legitimate student, uh, majoring in basketball first and, and study second, but uh, I got a very good education at Southeastern, and I got a great uh, MBA education at Southeastern. Huss's first love was basketball, and from the look here, you can see Craig Huss was very good at basketball. Huss played for then head coach E.W. Foy and assistant coach Ken Fortenberry, and Huss soaked up as much basketball as he could so he could get playing time. When you're vertically challenged, as I was, you, you learn. And, and uh, I, I learned very quickly. I, I, was, uh, I was limited athletically. Uh, I, I mean, I, I was a decent athlete, but I wasn't a great athlete. And, uh, and I, I didn't jump well. So I came in as a center and became a power forward and became a small forward. Um, and you learn very quickly, Coach Foy and Coach Fortenberry are great people, but their job is to win basketball games. So every year they're going out trying to recruit somebody better than you. So you just learn how to 
you know, how to set a pick and, and uh, how to run three positions and do this. Because I didn't come down, for, I came down for the scholarship, but I came down to play. After his playing days were over, Hush tried his hand at coaching, and he did so right here in Hammond as a graduate assistant at Southeastern. And during that season, Huss discovered more than just basketball. We got fairly serious that year, and I, I, I took her on. I was, I was recruiting or scouting a lot, a great deal on weekends. So I had a fairly busy, so I took her on. We took, went on some uh, scouting trips and, and, and did that to, to watch other teams. And I'll never forget, uh, she wasn't a big basketball junkie at that point, but we sat down to watch a game and, and she wanted to talk and my job was to write everything, you know, every tendency of every player and I, I realized about two minutes in this wasn't going to make it because she was talking about how good the cheerleaders were and, and the pep band and so I, I gave her a shot chart, uh, a diagram and said now when this person shoots you write their number down if they make it, you, you circle it and she got into it and now, after raising three sons, she's as big a basketball junkie or bigger, bigger than I am. So it's uh, it, it fits. Craig and Melinda Huss were later married and raised three kids. Craig retired in 2011, and the couple lives near Decatur, Illinois. Huss was honored at the annual alumni awards banquet this past weekend, and was the grand marshal of the 2014 homecoming parade. Congratulations to Mr. Huss as he was named Alumnus of the Year here in 2014. We're now going to turn our attention to the tennis court as Coach Jason Hayes and his Lady Lion Tennis Program get ready for fall here in 2014. Let's check them out. Well, I think the biggest thing we have now is work ethic, Todd. Uh, I think this year it's a better group. Uh, we have eight girls that are fully committed to what we're doing. And every time we step out on the court, uh, we get a little bit better each day because all the girls are challenging themselves. I think it's been pretty different than last year, for example. This year we practice every day from Monday through Saturday. This year we have fitness, which is, has been helping us tremendously. We, whenever we go out there to play a match, we feel like we don't get tired. And it's been helping us a lot. Um, we've been practicing way more than last year, and we're getting more prepared than, than the previous season. Well, it has started really good. I feel much more comfortable than last year. And we have a brand new team with four new freshmen, and they're all really good, really good, and they give their best on the court. So I think we have a good, a good team spirit, and this helps a lot. And I feel really good in this team. And as Renee said before, we have fitness, and so now I feel really stronger. And I think all of us are feeling the same, and we can play three, three games in a row, and we don't feel that we are tired or we're not sore as much as last year. So I think that's really good. Everyone who's associated with Southeastern always knows that Coach Jason Hayes does a tremendous job with the tennis program. We're now going to go right here to Strawberry Stadium and take a look as Southeastern football took on UCA for homecoming. Here's the highlights. This was a big play, fourth down, your defense stops them at midfield. Huge play, fourth down, they go for it midfield. Isaiah Corbett, Mike Eugene make the hit in the backfield on the quarterback. Uh, just a big time stop. So your offense starts at midfield, and Cody Sutton will get it going with the run game. Yeah, great cut. Nice cut there again. Makes another cut down the field. Make the DB miss some wide open space. So you're moving the football once again. You end up having to settle for a field goal, but Ryan Adams, he's been automatic. You send him in, and that makes the score 20 to 10. So you're up by two possessions here in the third quarter. Yeah, that was huge, I think, right there. To, to go up by the 10 points, uh, to put that, that that field goal in, Ryan Adams has been very, somebody we can depend on and count on every time. You said it earlier, uh, good teams, they do this. They answer and really went to the running game. The offensive line got it going, and Cody Sutton just ran the football uh, like a warrior on this possession. Yeah, he, he really had a couple of runs. He broke off there, really great runs, great reads, great cuts, finished the run off, and gets us down inside the 10-yard line. And this is a third down play, third and goal as Brian makes a great athletic move and gets it in the end zone. As it go, you go up by 10 points, you didn't want to have to settle for a field goal there. You go up by two possessions once again. Yeah, it's nice to be able to keep that lead and be up by 10. Uh, Ryan Adams is going to finish with the, the extra point kick again. So here's a, another great play by Denzel Thompson as they're trying to drive to get back in the ball game, and he makes a great play. Uh, so right here, midway through the fourth quarter, you have the ball, you're up by 10, you're feeling pretty good uh, about where you're at. Uh, yeah, I mean, a huge pick by Denzel there. Defense answered, answered the, the call again. And, uh... So just like that, it's back to a three-point game, and then this, 
this is maybe the play of the year as it was a three-point game and Brian goes 75 yards for a touchdown. Maybe his signature moment here in 2014 as a big-time play uh, by your senior quarterback. Yeah, it takes the ball 75. And Wow, it answers the call again. Uh, that's the biggest thing I thought. Every time when our offense got the challenge and got issue, you know, had to step up and make a huge play, they did. And then uh, defensively here is going to kind of kind of seal this thing up uh, with a couple of great series. Isaiah Corbett on the sack. Uh, when they got to really put the ball to the test through the air. We're going to get some great pressure on them. Yeah, as you really harass their quarterback at this point. They uh, couldn't get anything going as they would face a fourth down on this drive. They had to go for it this late in the ball game, down by 10 points, and your defense would come up with another big stop. Big stop there. That uh, again, Denzel Thompson again on the big play there to, to hold him short. And this was the nail in the coffin here, Coach. As Xavier Overson cuts back across the grain and goes untouched for the touchdown uh, to put you up by 17 points here and really close this one out. Yeah, nice run there. Great read, great cut back across the grain. Goes untouched. Just a nice read on a stretch play. Cuts it all the way back. And takes it in. Congratulations to the football team as they move to 4-0 in Southland Conference play and right now are the only undefeated team in the Southland Conference. Alright, let's take our final break. When we come back, I'll be joined by head women's basketball coach Yolanda Moore right here on the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. <gasps> Hello, beautiful. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi, Anthony. How much does my discount double check save me? About $150. Done. I don't have State Farm, but insurance, find me money. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. There to help you with unexpected savings. That's getting to a better state. I'm Yolanda Moore, head women's basketball coach here at Southeastern Louisiana University, and I want you to join us as we usher in a new era of Lady Lion basketball. For more information on season tickets, log on to www.lionsports.net, or you can call 549-LION. Lion up. Welcome back to the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. I'm Alan Waddell, and now joined by women's basketball coach here at Southeastern Louisiana University, Coach Yolanda Moore. Coach, thanks for stopping by and spending some time with us as we're just a couple of weeks away from getting your season tipped off. Uh, tell us about the, the, this version of your Lion team that we'll see uh, on the court. Well, I think that uh, people are gonna, the fans are going to be pleased with the product that we're going to put on the floor. You know, we've got a good core of last year's team coming back, so it's not like we're starting, you know, fresh and anew. Um, the kids have really bought into our philosophy, but, you know, toughness, just the, displaying mental toughness, you know, just playing hard for 40 minutes um, and, and being disciplined on offense, just running, just playing a, a pure form of the game of basketball, you know, playing to our strength. So one of the things that my coaching staff and I harp on all the time is, you know, understanding our identity and knowing who we are as a team and, and also as individuals. And, and it's coming along. It's progressing. And I'm very pleased with where we are. For those that don't know Coach Moore, her resume obviously speaks for herself, not only success as a player in the SEC and then also moving on to professional ranks, but now you're coaching uh, last year at LSU Eunice. Talk about what drew you here to Hammond and, and maybe some strengths in this university. Well, I, what drew me was obviously the opportunity. Um, I came down and I met with Coach Ortiz and kind of saw the campus. The first time I came over, he wasn't available, so I took it upon myself to kind of, you know, drive around Hammond, look, walk around the campus and to see what all it had, had to offer. The community is obviously great. You can drive any part of town and you're going to see, you know, the mass for, for Southeastern. So this, the community really embraces the university. Is very, very supportive. Um, it's family oriented. It's not very big, but it has a lot to offer. And, you know, that's what I like. I'm a, I'm a mom, so that was very important to me. Um, and also just the, the support of the administration uh, here with regard to the to athletics. And Coach JRTs has done a tremendous job with, the, uh, with what he's done to improving facilities and, and making sure that all of us coaches and all of our sports have everything that we need, you know, to, to make sure that our student athletes have a quality experience here and for us to be successful, not just on the court, but also in the classroom. You talked about it earlier about the 
uh, the success of the athletic program over the last couple of years. Basketball, both the men's and women's side, have had years uh, of great success here mm -hmm. at Southeastern. The last couple of years have been a little bit of a lull, but what needs to take place to, to bring the, uh, the women's program back to the forefront of the conference? I think that we're in a good situation this year because we have a good core of last year's team um, here coming returning so and, and last year's team and watching film you know our coaching staff and I evaluated that they won a bad team last year you know there was a few things you know that were kind of missing but I, I think that this year they understand the potential that they have and the biggest thing for us coming in as a staff was just to change their mindset to give them a championship mindset to have them to believe and to think uh, um, successful successfully you know to understand that if you put in the work and if you put in the time then you're gonna get the results that you want um, and it was a process initially but it, it wasn't as much of a process as I thought it was going to be. Um, our seniors, uh, Simone Miller and Elizabeth Stiles, have really, you know, shown tremendous leadership, even with Jamika. Uh, coming back, you know, she graduated in May and she could have, you know, opted to go on with her life, but she saw something special. She saw an opportunity for this team to do something great this year. So we've got her back and then we've got Anessa De La Cruz back. We've got, you know, Nana Poole who averaged 12 points and 10 rebounds. So we've got a good, a good group of, of young ladies um, for this season and I'm very pleased with what we have. Let's talk about the early schedule a little bit as you're, you're going to get tested right off the bat oh, yeah. as you're going to open <laughs> on the road at Minnesota and take on the, the Lady Golden Gophers up there, but then you'll come home November the 18th for your first home game at the University Center against Southern, but an early, uh, it's, it's a challenging schedule early on. Absolutely, and it was designed that way. It was done by design. I think that, um, you know, getting having our schedule set the way that it does is going to set us up for um, conference play, um, and opening on the road against Minnesota, it's a team that we've never played before. It's going to be a different type of atmosphere than the girls are used to um, participating in, so you know, I think it's going to be a good challenge for us, especially to show where we are mentally um, and, and definitely physically, but I, I'm looking forward to the challenge. I mean, we're going to go up there, we're going to compete, we're going to play to win just like Minnesota's going to come to play to win. Well, Coach, uh, we look forward to watching your team this year and watching the growth here at Southeastern. If you haven't had a, a chance to do so, you can go by and pick up your season tickets yes. uh, for women's basketball. So, Coach, thanks for stopping by. Thank Spelling. you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Alan Waddell. This has been the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. Mm -hmm.